Hey beautiful people, I'm Lucy and in this week's episode we are talking all about the adjustment brush in Lightroom and how you can use it to bring certain elements of your photos to life. The other fun thing about this week is we're gonna try to do this in one take because I have like, I have like 15 minutes and then I have to go so let's see if we can do this, okay? Let's get at it. So I love the adjustment brush tool because it allows you to change just certain elements of your photos because a lot of the time maybe just one little part needs some tweaking. Maybe the overall exposure is great but your subject just needs a little extra oomph. This is the tool to use. So let's check it out. Now you're going to find the adjustment brush just above the panels actually. It's this long brush right there. Give it a click. And what you can see here is that you have all of your options, everything that you can change, and then the actual brush settings. Now, the biggest issue I find when people have problems with using the adjustment brush is actually the brush settings. And this is also where I totally screwed up when I first started. All right, so let's just jump into a plain white photo to really kind of see how the brush is working. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down on this brush all the way down four stops never actually do this but it's good to see how the brush works so you can change the size on your brush obviously and then feathering is how soft or how hard that brush is gonna be so completely feathered something like that and no feather something like that so you can see how it goes I usually have it pretty feathered because I just want it to kind of really blend in really nicely but that's gonna be up to you and how you want to do that Go ahead, delete that. Let's bring some feathering back in. Now, the biggest part where people mess up is on the flow because this can be really, really confusing. So when your flow is at 100%, it means 100% of those settings are gonna be applied. So let's take a look. There we go. If I bring flow down to 50, think of that as like 50% of those settings or maybe something like a 50% opacity. Now if I do one line, I have those same settings on, but look at it, it's so light. The cool thing though about bringing down flow is that you can go through and build it up. So if I keep clicking and I keep, you know, moving my mouse, it gets darker and darker. And I can make it to be as dark as that building it up over time. So the reason you might want flow is if you're just kind of painting in light and Maybe you just kind of want to get a feel. You want one side to be darker, one to be lighter. That's where that would come into play. I normally keep the flow at around 75, but you know, you kind of have to play with it and see what works for you. Density, very similar to flow, but I almost never use it. And the only thing with density is, is remember how in flow, when we were at 50 and we could build it up to 100? Well, with density, if you go to 50, you can't build it up. It can only ever be at 50%. So I never really use the density tool because my thought process is, why don't I just make the settings what I want them to be? If I don't want it to be so harsh, I'll bring down the exposure. So that's why I don't really use density that much. You might find it to be a worthwhile tool, but I like to stick with just size, feather, and flow. So now that we understand how the brush works, let's go over to a photo and just try some things out, see what we can change, see how awesome this tool actually is. So when you wanna start a new brush, you just click new and Often it will remember your previous setting. So to just reset that every time, double click effect, and we have a nice clean slate. Now one of the best things to use this brush for is just to bring up the exposure or make certain elements lighter. So I'm gonna try to brighten up this guitar. I feel like if you do too much with just exposure though, it looks, you know, it doesn't look so good. So normally when I wanna brighten something up, I'll brighten up the shadows first. So let's go onto the guitar, bring down the feathering a bit. I'm happy with the flow around there and just start painting it in. So as you do that, you can kind of see if you're liking your settings or if you think, you know what, maybe some things need to kind of be fixed up, but you can change it after you've put it in. So now I could go, you know what, maybe I need some warmth on that guitar and maybe I want it to be more saturated and Maybe actually some of those highlights need to come down. So get that to a point where you're feeling really happy with it, right? Now, if you wanna see just what you've actually covered, you can click show selected mask 
and in red it shows you what you've highlighted. So I can see here that I've actually gone over the lines. So hit option and you'll get the eraser and you can just kind of fill that in. Erase those parts that you don't want. Now you can also press the O key on your keyboard to toggle this mask on and off. So I'm gonna press O key. Now I'm not seeing it, I'm just seeing my changes. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Let's go over to this Instamax. So I'm gonna press new, get a brand new brush, double click effect so that all of those are reset. Now, if you notice when I did the guitar, I went over the lines. I went outside of the guitar because I was just, you know, brushing all willy nilly and stuff. Did people say willy nilly? That was weird. That's not something I never, I never have said that term before, so whatever. Anyway, back to editing. Um, I went outside of the lines. Now, Lightroom has a really, really cool effect where you can do auto mask and it's gonna help you stay within the lines of what you're changing. So let's press the O key so we can see what we're gonna do. And let's cover the whole Instamax. And you can see that it's basically helping me stay inside the lines. I'm not really trying too hard, but it's staying in it. Cover the whole thing there. Press O. Now let's do some changes. I'm gonna add some blue into that little guy. Bring up the saturation. Bring down the blacks, because I actually want it a bit more contrasty. There we go. That looks good. All right. So now you kind of get the gist of how this tool works. You just kind of go around trying out some new things and seeing what works. You know, you can do a lot with color, a lot with light, like on these little blueberries here. Let's bring up the shadows. Let's make them a bit actually bluer. You can do that on the blackberries too. Bring up the saturation, maybe make it a bit more visible. All these kind of things, right? I can go new double click, do the same kind of thing on these kiwis, make them look greener, looks nice. Now, another really cool thing that you can do is you can actually add an inject color, not just with the temp and tint, because that's not always gonna be the colors that you want. So what you can do is grab a new brush. I'm gonna cover up these like watermelons because they're kind of like dead looking. Like they're not very colorful, you know, they're really faded. So I could use the tint to add a bit of color, but at a certain point it looks super fake, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go here and click color. Now I can add a color to this, right? If I go all the way, it's gonna be like bad, super intense, but you can just go bring down the saturation and find a point that looks good. Okay, that's too much. Down, down. Okay, that's looking nice. So I hope you get an idea now of how you can use this adjustment brush to do really cool things on your photos. If you wanna see how you've changed it, click this little light switch. And I'll show you the before, after. Before, after of just your changes with the adjustment brush. This is an awesome tool to just really go in fine tune things and just really make your photos pop. One more point I will make is that you can always go back to another one by clicking this little gray thing. You can go back and make further changes to it. All right, that was super fun. I feel like after looking at this photo of just like a plate of food, I'm super hungry. So I got a jet and also I did this in the one take. Okay, I lied, there, there was one cut. There's definitely gonna be one cut in here, but hey, I did pretty good. All right guys, until next Monday, Peace out.